Hey, you clicked on my video. Appreciate it. Now be sure to like the video and subscribe to the page. Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Outta My League. I'm Nick Diaz. Stats are for losers. That's why baseball uses them so much. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Don't Please don't exit out of the video. I'm kidding. I'm just being a little cynical about baseball because, well, the MLB and their players can't get along. But anyways, that's just better news to grow the game of college baseball. Now, they say stats are for losers, but not all stats. Just most stats. Uh, most of them can be deceiving, especially in football. Holy shit, in football. But baseball, stats are more useful than the majority of team sports because... Well, it's more of a skill-based sport. It's, it's less about brute physicality than the other sports. Now, with LSU baseball, they've played seven games. Not a lot, but it's not just three games either like we were complaining after last weekend. So, I figured, all right, after seven games, now is a good time to at least look and try to see if we can determine the shape of this year's LSU baseball team. If we can try to see it come to form after a midweek game and a three-game series and a four-weekend uh, game series. So the offense, we knew it was going to be powerful and talented. But with the exception of, say, Jacob Berry and Braden Jobert at DH, who was not, going supposed, who was not supposed to be the starting DH before Cade Beloso got hurt in pregame, uh, it was talented and powerful last year, too. Just like it is this year. They had Beloso, Cruz, Morgan, Dugas. Dugas led the SEC in RBIs, and all of those guys are back. But what they, as an offense, weren't last year was disciplined. Jay Johnson being an expert hitting coach and maybe the best hitting coach in the country, we've already seen improvement week to week in that area. In the first three games, LSU broke a school record. Great, awesome. They also had 37 strikeouts in three games against cold weather team Maine. In the four games this weekend, however, against Southern and Townsend, slightly better competition, they had 12 strikeouts. So in one week, they go from 37 strikeouts in three games to only 12 strikeouts in four games. Discipline, improvement. You'll see that week to week, and that should be no surprise with the Jay Johnson coach team. But what's more encouraging is that the bottom of the lineup, which was a huge problem last season, Alex Malazzo. He hit the horrible 135 last season. I don't want to you know rake on the kid, but it is what it is. And the problem is, or the dilemma being, is that, well, he's an elite catcher. And your other really good catcher who's a really good hitter is not a very good catcher. Well, Malazzo threw seven games is hitting 286. Much better. Now, he won't hit that in SEC play. I get it. But here's the thing. Malazzo won't have to. Because this past weekend, seven out of his nine at-bats, not all of them were hits, but seven out of his nine at-bats were considered productive. Meaning, sacrifice flies. Bunts that got guys in scoring position. Walks. He's the only guy in your lineup that was a glaring, a truly glaring weakness. That's all you need out of him going forward. That's all you need from him going forward, considering how productive the other eight guys are going to be. It's an elite lineup. Someone will more than likely be on base by the time Alazo comes up to bat. Pitching, which was the biggest question going into the season, Blake Money is Blake Money. On Friday, he looks like a top-flight SEC pitcher. Whether or not he'll be that by season's end once he faces other SEC competition, we'll see. But right now, it looks like he will be. But here's what I think LSU is going to have to do to win SEC series. They are probably, more than likely, going to have to put most, if not all, put most of their chips into winning the Friday game with Blake Money. Because your Saturday starter, Malik Hilliard, while he'll have better weekends ahead of him than the ones he's had so far two weeks in a row, he's not stretching long into the game into many innings like, say, Blake Money is. His pitch count is still relatively low for an SEC Saturday starter. Now it's still cold outside. That will grow naturally as it warms up. And maybe it's just as simple as, you know, moving Hilliard back to Sunday starter where he had success last season. Many coaches will tell you that sometimes it's just as simple as changing the days of the week for a pitcher. It makes all the difference in the world. But when you have that, 
Plus, add into the fact that Ty Floyd, your current Sunday starter, still only has a fastball in his arsenal, and every other secondary pitch is shaky at best. You're putting too much pressure on your offense the rest of the weekend on Saturday and Sunday against the SEC pitching staff. So if you lose those Friday games with Blake Money, you're kind of in trouble the rest of the way. I don't care how good the offense is. That's not a recipe for success. Now, as far as fielding goes, a little sloppy minus the Louisiana Tech game, which was just weird, wet turf. It is what it is. But they've gotten better in CRISPR game to game as far as errors have goes and fielding goes, double plays. Still needs some cleaning up, but nothing through seven games that should be a cause for concern. They are where they're probably expected to be. Now, me, being a non-baseball expert that I am, I would like to try Hilliard on Sundays and have Will Helmers pitch on Saturdays or vice versa. Maybe keep Hilliard on Saturdays, give him a few more weeks and try Helmers on Sundays because he's more of a versatile pitcher than, say, Ty Floyd. But besides the other two starters on Saturday and Sunday, which is a big deal, the surprisingly good news is that LSU has some loaded depth in their pitching staff, closers and relief pitchers. More than probably any of us expected they would. Which is good because, let's let's face it, we all knew before the season, it was more than likely that LSU was going to need most of their relief pitchers and closers in the weekend rotation in a heavy, heavy role. So that's through seven games the shape that we've seen of LSU baseball. That will likely change. And we'll get a better idea of that shape this weekend in the Shriners Classic. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or follow me on Twitter and Facebook in the description link below.